Hi everybody, my name is Jaden. I'm Nicole. I'm Eli. I'm Jason. I'm Caden. And we are the Yahoo and the Torah YouTube channel. And it's the first day and we are so glad you guys could join us and spend your first day with us. If you want to do anything with the Bible, you should be in the Torah. You should not be going to a 501c3 church. You should not be going and worshiping the sun god on a Sunday. There is no god in a church on a Sunday but Satan himself. So you don't want to be worshiping that church. You want to be reading your Torah. You want to be studying the word. You want to be doing what Yahuwah has said, and he wants to just keep the Shabbat, and going on a Sunday is not the Shabbat. Yeah, and if you are actually going to church on Sunday, you are breaking the laws, statutes, and commands of our Creator. Um, number one, you're, you're offering, there's other Elohim, because our Elohim is not in a, a first day church. He's in the seventh day Ecclesia, where you meet up, and he is, uh, you, you're, there's all sorts of idols and graven images, and you start, if it really was a Shabbat, you'd be paying out of your pocket on the Shabbat, um, then most people will go and have dinner right after church. That was a big thing when I was growing up. We'd always go out and we'd have, this is go to some buffet thing and eat. And there's just, uh, we have other people working and, you know, it's just, it's a different kind of lifestyle when you keep the Torah, when you're doing this kind of stuff. So thank you guys very, very much. Um, how's everybody? Good. 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 Cool. Everything good. good? Everyone, everyone okay? Yeah. Yep. Everything is still live out there on the farm? No, I think so. Everything good. So I wanted to briefly touch on one of the reasons that I bring up um, our personal stuff often is, um, number one, I, 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 this is not to ever have anyone feel sorry for us. There is no reason to ever feel sorry for us. We have enough barrels of lentils. Our provider, Yah, has provided enough food. Like It may not be the kind of stuff everyone else is used to, but we will not die of starvation. So it, I bring a lot of this stuff up because I want to show you guys the miracles of Yah and the stuff that he is doing and that when we have the faith in Yah, he will provide. And I mentioned this the other day that we had a, a widow that we had helped years ago. And it was very interesting because yesterday, I, I didn't know this. She, she actually went and donated um, like almost 200 bucks to us. It was a huge, huge amounts of money to a little Poe family like us that are sitting out in the middle of the jungle. Um, and I didn't know because she was talking to, yesterday she called and, and talked to Nicole and they were talking back and forth. And she said something to the effect that she was sitting there and Yah was, Yah told her that he, she needed to put money to us. And I, it, when it, when she said that, I was like, wow, that is, that is very, that is, that is crazy because we don't, we don't pray for food, right? We, if it, food, it comes and it goes here in this house. We have, we have, it's what they call feast or famine. And we end up with our fridge empty all quite often, right? I, we haven't seen lettuce. We haven't seen tomatoes. We haven't seen anything fresh for a very, very long time. Uh, we didn't have any food. We didn't have any meat. We didn't have anything like that. And, you know, we, we just, we live like this. This is where it is. When we don't have this kind of stuff, Nicole makes extra bread or makes, there's, it, we're <laughs> real bready style people because we have a, quite a bit of flour and we have a lifetime of lentils. Thank Yah. So when we say this kind of stuff, I, it's more to encourage those out there that if you are not under affliction yet, that the affliction will come and we can deal with it and we can fight through this and Yah will never, ever let us down. So I was blown away that um, her, her, she would do this. And I was even more blown away that she heard from Yah that, that she needed to do this, which, which again, we're not, we're not praying for food. We're not asking Yah. We're not, we're not, we're not dying, right? We're, we're doing just fine um, with what we have. And then it was amazing because after that yesterday, her mom decided she wanted to match what she put in. So yesterday after Shabbat, we ended up with another two hundred dollars, and I haven't seen two hundred dollars for like this for, for that we can spend personally for a very, very, very long time. And I'm just I am blown away at the mercy of our Creator, who when we didn't even pray for food, even though we didn't have any, like we had not eaten chicken or stuff like that for quite a while, we just didn't have any. And um, it's just how it is. And so. None of this is to feel sorry for us. We're, there's nothing to ever feel sorry for. We're probably more blessed than the majority of the world out there. Um, we just live a completely different lifestyle. And um, Yah will provide. He will provide for us. And he will provide for you. And all we need is a little bit of faith. And sometimes the providing doesn't come like you think it would. Or sometimes when you pray for stuff, it doesn't happen like you think it should. Or like your heart desires but there's always another reason and there's always another way through all of this stuff. And um, 
anyway, it's just all praise and glory to Yah. He is a, a just a, an amazing creator. I, I don't even know. I, I just don't have words to say my gratitude to Yah. And I hope you guys um, get something out of this and understand that we are we are simply praising our creator and, and hoping that you guys will as well because he will take if he took care of us, he will take care of you guys. Um, all right, so that is that. Um, anyone have anything else that we have going on? Uh, we need to go over the day. We need to go over the day. Thank you very much. My mind is obviously scattered. Um, and so today is the sixth month on our creator's calendar. It is the 28th day of the month and is the first day of the week. This is the day we are absolutely not supposed to be in a church. And so we will begin and we only have... And if you look real quick... Oh, hold on. Hold on, Kate. You just went crazy. Okay, you closed Anyways. it all up. You can't look now. What do you, what Anyways, do you have to... Anyways, uh, Yom Teru is coming up. Yom Teru, right. Okay. Yeah, Yom Teru is coming up. Um, I had another video I was going to do on the laws of rape because we actually figured this out, and I don't know if we should go over this now. Maybe we will. Hold on. Let me pause this real quick. I'll be right... All right. So we're back here. Kate, you were talking about Yom Teru. Mm-hmm. When? Uh, just a couple days from now. Uh, do we see it down here? Yep. Oh, they call it Rosh Chodesh. That's like the head That's of the, the month. That's the Jewish name or something, mm-hmm. isn't it? Okay. Yeah. So we have Yom Teruah. So that what is exactly Yom Teruah? That's basically at sunset of this day, that of the thirtieth, which you see here, is that we get a a feast, a festival, and it's the Feast of Trumpets. Uh, yeah. I don't know if it's a feast, but it's the day of blessing. It's a day. It's a day of blessing. I don't know if it's a feast but or it's not. It's a high Shabbat. It is a high Shabbat. So on the thirtieth, uh, well, it's not really thirtieth because that's not our, our thing. Well, actually, it is the thirtieth of our Creator's calendar. So on the thirtieth of the calendar, which would be a uh, third day, so that's going to be a Tuesday for everybody. That is actually a high Shabbat. What does this mean, everybody? Uh, Anyone? It's like it's like we're gonna take it as a regular Shabbat, as we're gonna take it and we don't do any work. We don't do any. I don't. If it's a feast, we we can cook. Is this a feast or not? Do we know if it's a feast? Is it a hag? It's a. Uh, I don't think it. I don't know. I'll have to look. I don't think. Do we do we feast on the high Shabbat? It's a high it? Shabbat, so I think we can we can cook. We can cook, but it's it's no servile work, right? right. And so it is a. And then is that what else do we have going on after that? And then after that, we have, is it a Yom week Kippur. later? Atonement. Ten days later. Ten days later, we have the Day of Atonement. Yep. So that's important. All right. So that's um, that's that on the calendar. Now, I want to take you over to the Law of Rape. Now, this was very weird. And, I, you know, we talked about this. We've discussed it. We could not figure it out. We see what it says when you read it. And this is what it says. Uh, Deuteronomy 22, 28, and 29. If a man find a damsel that is a virgin, which is not betrothed, and lay with her, lay on her, and lie on with her, and they be found... Then the man that lay with her shall give unto the damsel's father fifty shekels of silver, and she shall be his woman. Because he has humbled her, he may not put her away all his days. Now, when you see this and you look at this, and you Nicole and I are trying to write the commands out, and this is a command, but it's hard to define things like this because as you read it, it literally is the law of rape. There, it, it basically is a man, uh, unconsensual relations with a woman who is not going on board with the whole thing. And it seemed a little odd to us that this was the way to do it. So I asked Brother Todd Bennett, and um, Todd Bennett is a, an amazing, amazing guy. If you have not seen ShemaiYisrael.net, um, he takes tours to Israel all the time. He is a Torah-keeping uh, y- Yahusha loving individual. Let's see what he says. He says it's actually an amazing commandment. The knee jerk reaction is what, Jade? Kill a dude. Yeah, so he has a quote. It's kill the guy. Uh, yeah, Jade is not able to see my screen, so that would be the knee jerk reaction. And that's what we've talked about, right? We talked about the father. Like, definitely this guy, I mean, he might marry the daughter, but he might be in a body cast, right? He might have to be doing his I do's from the side of a, a, a bed on Somebody a gurney. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to be good. In fact, you know, if that ever happened, but this is it. Listen, in fact, his actions are worthy of death, like a murderer, as specifically pointed out. He would be killed if the woman was married or betrothed and the woman was innocent so she could remain in her rightful relationship with her man. Okay, you understand that, right? Mm-hmm. So if she is raped. Outside, if she's married, the guy dies, nothing happens to her. There's nothing she could do. Now, listen, this is where it becomes amazing. In those cases, the woman would still be provided for by her husband. The unwed virgin was put in a terrible predicament because she lost her virginity. That would stigmatize her, and she would likely never get married in ancient times. 
When her father died, she would probably become a poor outcast with no one to help her, to care for her. By not killing the rapist, Yahuwah was protecting the victim. If the guy was killed, she would remain in a difficult spot. Instead, Yahuwah forced the wrongdoer to provide for her throughout her entire life with no possibility of divorce. It doesn't undo the horrible act, but neither does killing the guy. It is a form of justice that provides for the victim. Wow. So, Broy Chin, yesterday in our chat. Broy Chin? Yeah. She was, or he, was very close to saying that, that if an engaged woman is raped, she lost her opportunity to be anyone's wife. So, they were correct. Right. And so, this is, basically, this takes care of the victim. Instead of... uh, it would be really simple to, to kill a guy, right? That, and that's and everyone would be like, yay! But then, 20 years later, when the woman has no husband or no place to go and her dad dies, then she's a vagabond, right? It, would, it could possibly turn her into a whore or something of the sort where she wouldn't be able to provide for her family or herself, and it would turn her into a vagabond. So as this is one of these commands, we go, oh... I get it. And that's what we said, right? We're like, oh, man, there must be something more to this that we, we do. And I thank you very, very much to Brother Todd Bennett for helping us out with that. Um, that I, I did not understand that. And you have to put yourself into the Hebrew mindset and t- the world that they lived in where that is the laws. And so here we are. All right, guys, we are four chapters away from the end of this, right? 35 counts. Is it 35? 34, but if you count 30, you have 35. Well, it's 34. 30, 30 31, 32, 31, 30, 31, 30, 31, 30, 32, 33, 34. If you count 30. 30, 30 31, 32, 33. It's not five. How are you guys getting five? It's I don't know. 30, 30, 31. Because 30, we're reading 30, 30 today. Would you stop tapping on the table? Every time you do that, it makes this huge booming on the mic. It, so <laughs> we're reading 30 today, but yep. then there's still four more chapters. All right, all right, fine. You guys win. Okay, here we go. Deuteronomy 30. And it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon you, the blessing and the curse, which I have set before you. And you shall call them to mind among all the nations whither Yahuwah Eloheka has driven you and shall return unto Yahuwah Eloheka and shall obey his voice according to all that I command you this day, you and your children with all your heart and with all your soul. Okay, I know that continues on, but I I want to talk about this real quick because this is... This is something that is saying like today's times, right? When you figure this out, when you have have understood that you are a child of the Most High, you will call to mind in the other nations, Yahuwah, if you obey his voice and if you you do what he commands you, he will turn your captivity into a, a blessing probably. So at the end of that it says with all your heart and with all your soul then that then Yahuwah Eloheka will turn your captivity and have compassion upon you and will return and gather you from all the nations whither Yahuwah Eloheka has scattered you this is us right this is for us right when we figure out that we are captives in the end times that we are literally in Babylon we're not technically slaves like they were back in the day but we are in the land where the slaves when we've been driven to the four corners of the earth four corners of the earth. It's not a ball. Okay, four. If any of yours be driven out unto the outmost parts of heaven, from thence when you, will Yahuwah Eloheka gather you, and from thence he will, will he fetch you. That is amazing, right? If any parts of the heaven, outmost, it means wherever you're at. Are you in Africa? Are you guys in Canada? Are you guys in Brazil? Or wherever you are, from one side of the earth to the other, our creator will call us out and will save us and take care of us. And I know without a shadow of a doubt that this is real and this is what will happen. So this is good news for all of us. Five. And Yahuwah Eloheka will bring you into the land which your fathers possessed, and you shall possess it, and he will do you good and multiply you above your fathers. And Yahuwah Eloheka will circumcise your heart and the heart of your seed to love Yahuwah Eloheka with all your heart and with all your soul that you may live. Now, here's Paul's stuff, right? This is, this is what Paul is simply repeating when Paul talks about this stuff, right? He's talking about circumcision of the heart. And we, we've we been discussing in another series we have that there was a circumcision party that were all Talmudic Jews that their first thing they want to do is break out the uh, scalpel and start cutting away. And that does no good if we are not keeping laws, statutes, and commands. It is a physical mark only. It is not a, it is not a spiritual mark if your heart is not with Yah. So everybody who's been circumcised but does not keep the law, statutes, and commands is out of covenant of our creator. Seven. 
And Yahuwah Eloheka will put all these curses upon your enemies and on them that hate you, which persecuted you. And you shall return and obey the voice of Yahuwah and do all his commandments, which I command you this day. Um, do we have any commands at all? Anyone? Have you guys? I don't think so. One thing I want to point out is a lot of uh, Christians will use that to say that that's how they bless the Jews because they don't want to be cursed their enemies. They don't want to be against our enemies, but they aren't the people of Israel. Yeah, and then that that is absolutely without a shadow of a doubt. Very good point, kid. Um, that is the Christian again a uh, hoax that the Christians have, and everybody we because of the video we have here on YouTube where we get uh, you know hundreds of new subs every month, and it is uh, they're all God bless Israel. God bless Israel. God bless her. I stand with Israel. I stand with Israel. Pray, I st please pray for Israel or something like yeah, that. Yeah, please pray. How about this? How about we please pray that Israel gives up its abortion clinics to begin with? Hey, if you guys want to think that there there is no holy land when you're killing babies off, and I've shown this before, and I'm not going to show it again, but there are, is an abortion clinic that's open till 1130 at night in Israel. Is that holy? Oh, yeah, let's bleed our kids out even till the, the crack of, of you know dawn. Here we go. Um, nine. nine. And Yahuwah Eloheka will make you plenteous in every work of your hand, in the fruit of your body, and in the fruit of your cattle, and in the fruit of your land, for good. For Yahuwah will again rejoice over you for good as he rejoiced over your fathers. That is amazing. I don't know why this, this whole chapter is super amazing. It's that our creator rejoices when his people are looking for him, right? That makes him happy. That's what we're seeking. That is what we are, this whole thing. And it's not just a one-way street. This is not a, a, I'm getting on my knees and I am a uh, slave to our creator. None of this is slavery. The Torah is complete freedom. You're only a slave when you're stuck into sin that you can't get rid of. 10, if you shall hearken unto the voice of Yahuwah Eloheka, to guard his commandments and his statutes, which are written in the Sefer of the Torah. And if you turn unto El Yahuwah Eloheka with all your heart and with all your soul, for this commandment, which I command you this day, it is not hidden from you, neither is it far off. Okay, it mine does says, say it, commandment. Mine says it is not too hard for you, nor is it far off. Okay, but it does say your commandment, right? For this command, I think. Okay, so we have a commandment. If you obey the voice of Yahuwah, Elohim guard his commands, his laws, which are written in this book of the Torah. If you turn back to right. Yahuwah, Elohim with all your heart and with all your being. So ten is the commandment. Yep. Nicole, yeah. you got that. We already. This is just a sub command, right? Going to the guard statutes and commands. Okay. Another one. All right. Where are we at? Twelve. Yeah. Twelve. Twelve. Okay. It is not in heaven that you should say, "Who shall go up for us to heaven and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it?" What is he saying with that? I don't understand. <laughs> Is it not in the Shamayim to say, Who shall ascend into the Shamayim for us and to bring it to us and cause us to hear it so that we do it? Uh, so I think he's talking about the Torah, right? Yeah. yeah but this is the people. Like, the people are saying like, something. Uh, is someone going to go up to heaven and, gra and like uh, gra get the command to then tell us it or something? But they already got it. I mean, mm -hmm. this, so he's basically saying, I mean, this it's already been done. The Torah already came. The, the, it's the already written. Guardian, guardian of the Shamayim has delivered it to us. Thirteen. Neither is it beyond the sea that you should say, who shall go over the sea for us and bring it unto us that we may hear and do it? These are all excuses, right? Mm -hmm. Well, who's going to bring us the Torah? Are they going to come from across oh, yeah. the sea? I never learned the Torah. Yeah, you know, these are going to come from heaven. Is somebody going to show me? You know, that's what they're going to say. So 14, but the word is very nigh unto you in your mouth and in your heart that you may do it. See, I have set before you this day life and good and death and evil. Amazing. In that I command you this day to love Yahuwah Eloheka, to walk in his ways and to guard his commandments and his statutes and his judgments that you may live and multiply and Yahuwah Eloheka shall bless you in the land whither you go to possess it. So this goes like two places. Yeah. There's love two. Yahuwah and keep his commandments. Yeah, this might go in like a couple. And multiply. Yeah, multiply, live and multiply, right? And um, yeah, so we'll have to sort this out today, Nicole, get caught up a little bit. Yep. 17, but if your heart turn away so that you will not hear, but shall be drawn away and worship other Elohim and serve them, Sunday keepers, I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land whither you pass over the Ardeen to go to possess it. I call the heavens and the earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing, Therefore, choose life that both you and your seed may live. Wow. 
is I don't know. This, I'm just, this is just a really, really awesome chapter. That you may love Yahuwah Eloheka, and that you may obey his voice, and that you may cleave unto him, for he is your life and the length of your days, that you may dwell in the land which Yahuwah swore unto your fathers, to Evram, to Yitzhak, and to Yaakov, to give them. Okay, 19 says, I call upon the heavens and the earth to record this day against you. That's pretty heavy, right? Because we know that our creator created these in spirits, right? There was a, right. Uh, spirits. And so the land, the air, everything that we breathe, it's, it's, it's literally like the spirit of Yah. And it, he's all around us. And if you think that your creator's not, not around you, try taking a deep breath of air without oxygen, right? Try to, try to see what it is. He created all of the invisible. He created the visible. And he created the spiritual, everything that's out there. And so he called, Moshe called upon the heavens and earth to record this day against you. And that is a, that is a huge thing. Um, you know, we see the heaven, we see the earth. And he called upon that as the creator of the universe built um, that you choose life or choose death, right? Blessings or curses, choose life. Um, it's amazing. I don't know. That's, uh, that's the end of this chapter. Um, I think I'm probably going to crack up and, and probably tear up when we hit 34. Um, I've done it before. I'll probably do it again. I'll try to keep my, my maturity and understand that Moshe is already gone. But for us, 180 some days ago, this, this dude was the dude, right? For we've been, we've been tr cruising around with uh, Moshe for a very long time. And um, you, you, you kind of grow with him. And so I guess that's that, guys. Does anybody have anything else or anything positive or anything negative, I guess, that we have on any of this? No, no. I think it's all really good. I think this is a chapter for the Christians to hearken to the commands of Yah. But you need to... But they won't. That's the Old Testament. That's the old stuff. They're not going to care. Well, yeah, who is going to bring us out of captivity? Those who are following his Torah, those who turn back to his Torah. I mean, Absolutely. I mean, if you don't see it now, it will be too late when Yah brings his people, when he calls to his people, and you're not one of the chosen people, and you don't understand why. And he said, well, I told you to keep my commands, and you didn't do it. So. Well, they, they, they said that, you know, they, they, they'll have a billion excuses, but it, at the end, it's over. I mean, right? heaven and earth are witnessing against them. So. Heaven and earth have witnessed against them. Moshe will witness against them. Um, Yah's Torah will be the, uh, you know, the litmus test of, of will we keep it or will we fail? All right, guys. I guess that's it. Um, thank you guys very, very much. I appreciate you out there. To our family out there, we love you guys very, very much. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, huge hugs, huge love, um, and we will see you again on the other side. All right. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.